the Eurocanth for Calcarata, a must have for any Phasmid keeper. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly, so if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So guys, today we are going to be doing a husbandry video based on the Eurocanthor Calcarata. Now these are based mostly in Papua New Guinea. Um, they are a reasonably large phasmid and they have certain care requirements that we are going to go and discuss through this video. Now I've emptied a large exoterra and we're going to be scaping that out to try and make a really good environment for them and then I'm going to go through some tips and tricks as we go along. Now these guys do require around a 45 centimeter tall by 30 centimeter width enclosure for when they are fully adult. Um, my enclosure is actually slightly larger than that the bigger the better when it comes to phasmids guys it's not like with you if your tarantulas and things we're having them a bit more enclosed it's easy to catch the food items um, they feed off various plants such as bramble oak and things like that so bigger is better but you want at least the 45 centimeter by 30 centimeter if you are housing adult Eurocanthor calcarata anyway let's crack on shall we okay guys so here's our exoterra we can just turn that a little bit for you so you can see now we've got our, our background on there not necessary but it does give them something else to climb on now Eurocanthor calcarata are normally ground dwellers however they do like to have the occasional climb and the nymphs still do climb so what I've got I've got some rocks in here I've actually got four so I'm going to push these ones next to the other two like so and then I've got myself some sticks now we're going to be placing these going over the tops of those rocks and I'm going to hot glue gun them down so just got to find the position right my um, actual wire doesn't reach all the way to the back of the enclosure so I'm actually going to be gluing them pre-hand and then putting them in Right, so they're down. Now we're just going to add some smaller sticks. These ones I'm not gluing. I'm just going to kind of fill some gaps with them. May in some, some cases be better to put the substrate down first. Um, I'm doing it after. I'm going to shove some underneath just so that I could get everything in place without it being like rickety. So we've got the rocks. That are holding up some bits so I can slide my hand right under so you can see the depth of it and now what we're going to be doing is putting the substrate in just chuck it all in break it up a bit now you account for calcarata require a substrate bottom you cannot do the kitchen towel method with your account for calcarata reason being is adult females will actually deposit over into the substrate so you can do a kitchen towel method as long as you provide a dish that's easy enough to climb into um, with soil or sand or anything like that and they will, will actually find that point and place the over in but if I'm going to have substrate in my enclosures I'm going to fill the whole thing up to make it feel more natural for the invert themselves. A little, that should be a sufficient depth there. And as you can see, I've kind of covered both edgings as well. Sorry, my camera's on a tripod and it doesn't want to behave at the moment. Um, and we've still got our shelter there. So if I zoom back out, now these guys like a damp substrate, not soaking wet, but a damp substrate. I normally tend to leave it slightly drier in where they go to burrow, but I leave it moist around the sort of edges there for them. Now we're gonna add some sphagnum moss in here, just for partly for look, and also because it will keep up humidity levels within the enclosure and keep it to the sort of level that they would like it. So I've got my sphagnum moss here. 
First of all, we're gonna layer the top of the burrow so that it doesn't get any light in there. These guys are nocturnal. They'll come out in the evenings to feed and they will like a dark place to hide in. Now I have a different tub where my springtails live. So I'm gonna grab a handful of that substrate and there'll be loads within there. Now you've probably seen springtails in many other videos. Now they're used as your cleanup crew to get rid of any kind of mold that may come from a more damper environment. Now guys, what we wanna do next is put a pot of water in to keep our food plants inside. Now I'm using this kind of I think it was used for paint or something for kids, but where it dips in in the middle and just leaves a small hole, you put your branches in there and your nymphs are less likely to fall in and drown because they will do that guys if you've got a completely wide open top with loads of gaps between the branches. So getting these sort of non-spill type tubs are really, really handy. But I don't wanna just stick a tub like this in there. So I'm gonna hot glue some gun some bark around the edge so it gives more naturalistic look from the outside. So guys, I cut most of that footage because I actually bought the wrong size glue stick for this gun and I was literally having to push it, hold it, fire it and try and push the end at the same time to get the glue stick to go through. But um, here is the outcome. As you can see the other side, you can see it. And then we're gonna go find a place to pop that inside. You can see a little bit of blue on the inside there. But most of it from a frontal view is going to be completely and utterly covered. So then we're gonna put in our plants. Got some bramble here. Make sure it rests nicely into the water because the water will evaporate over time. So you want as much of the twig into the water as possible. And we also have some oak leaves here. So there we have it. Now I normally do put a little bit more than this in, but we only have a few adults and a few nymphs at the moment. So this is more than enough for now. Now Eurocantha calcarata are one of the few that require a water dish within their enclosure. Now this is because they are very, very thirsty phasmids and you want to make sure the water is provided because they are known to get more aggressive the more thirsty they are. Now Eurocantha calcarata males, I don't have an adult one left to show you at present, um, but there is a picture in a past video, an RIP one, I will link it up on the top somewhere anyway, um, where you can see the spikes on the back of their legs there, and they will use them to fight. So it's important to keep them hydrated, guys. Sorry about that, guys, that syringe didn't even hold half the amount of water I needed, so I've just gone and filled this up. Now, rainwater is best, However, you can just leave normal tap water to sit for a while before you use it. Now I'm replacing a bit of bark in here. And the only reason being is there are young nymphs in there and I want them to be able to climb out if they do fall in, because like I said, with the pot before they will drown, but the adults will require a lot more than like a very shallow dish to drink from. So we'll pop that one in, bury it down. And then for decoration, I've got some pine cones here. We'll just place them sort of Willy nearly into the enclosure there. My daughter actually picked these, so she'll be very happy I'm using them in an enclosure. Pop one, oops, down that side there. So there we have it, guys. This is a baby Eurocantha calcarata. Now they tend to keep sort of a mossy colors. They can go from greens and browns and things like that as they're nymphs, but they always stick to either very dark brown or almost black when they're adults. So let's pop these little guys in now. on this plant. Um, I don't think it's going to focus very well. But there's two just on here. There's one by my finger at the back here. Sorry it's blurry guys and there's another down here. Oh there we go. Now I'm just going to put this whole branch in like so. The branch will just eventually die out anyway and it just adds the effect to the enclosure really. Springtails will clean up any unwanted bits and bobs from the leaves. 
So we're just going to pop that one back in. There they are. We actually have about two to three hundred over at the moment. Um, and these ones are recently hatched, so we're probably going to have an awful lot more. Let's see if we can spot any more. Oh, there's one. And now we've got a few adults to put in. Like I said, the only adults I've got left at present are females. I only ever had one male anyway, and he passed, males pass away before females do. These guys are very, very old now. I'm surprised that they're still going. So guys, we were actually fortunate enough to have one outside of the cork bark tube, just walking on this piece of bark here. Now, as you can see, it colors really well into the bark, and these are why these are best suited as ground dwellers because they're less like sticks really and more like actual pieces of bark. There you have it. Now you can see little spikes on our legs there. Sometimes they will try and kick you with those. They really don't hurt guys. Whereas the males that have a much larger sort of thorny spike to their legs, they uh, they do hurt, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Nothing that'll put you in hospital or cause you any danger, but they will hurt. So I'm gonna pop this girl in here now. She's actually quite fat on the abdomen, so she is gonna be grabbed with more eggs. So let's pop her in. So there she is, climbing on her piece of bark at the moment, the bark that's actually holding the water dish. Got a bit of mud stuck to her head. Anyway, our others are actually just in this cork bark tube here. There we are, guys. So you can see how they like to huddle together there. There's a couple of them in there. Now, I'm not actually going to be able to get these guys out of this tube at the moment without causing them any stress or harm. So, for the moment, if we move the pine cone over maybe in this corner here for the moment. There's no nymph still on there, is there? And then we'll put this tube over here. Pull that leaf and put it up the top. And there we are, that actually fit quite nicely. I might leave it in there after all. So that's going to be resting towards the back. They've got plenty of room to come out here and come round. And I'm hoping they will start also using that hide down there. So that's going to be it from me today, guys. This was the husbandry video of the Eurocanthor calcarata, also known as the new guinea stick insect um, and giant thorny, I believe it is. But again, those common names, they're, they're used with various other stick insects too. Eurycanthor calcarata being their correct name. So guys, that's gonna be it for me today. I hope that's been some help for you guys. Just remember they need a hide, they're ground dwellers. They go from a sort of mossy green up into a dark coloration when they're older. Um, males can be defensive, especially when thirsty, so always place a water dish in with your Eurocanthor calcarata. Now, if they were going to strike you, it would be with their hind legs and they will sort of scissor kick inwards, same as a jungle nymph would. Um, and you also want to bear one more thing in mind that I couldn't show you in this video, and that is ratio. So ratio of males to females. If you have too many males in compared to your females, they will fight. So when I'm growing these nymphs up in here, I will have to keep an eye that there are more females than there are males, otherwise they will challenge each other for the females and injuries may well occur. Anyway guys, so that's it again from me. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video, guys, and give me a comment below. What do you think of my husbandry? Is there any more questions that you want to ask about the Eurocanthor calcarata? Thanks again, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.